Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do an unboxing and review. So this video will be filmed over the course of um, a few days, a week, maybe a couple of weeks. But um, we're going to take a look at this brand new watercolor set from Paul Rubens. I really enjoy trying out the new watercolor sets when Paul Rubens releases them because they usually are really good value for money. Paul Rubens is a Chinese brand, but they do offer professional level products. So this is their fifth generation artist level solid watercolor pigments. Um, Yulan, Yulan, I guess that's the name of the 24 color set. On the back, there's just some information about safety. Um, they're saying warning, prevention of accidental ingestion. This isn't for children, all of that sort of information, plus the address of the company. And like most of the Paul Rubens products, they come in a really nice giftable box. This is a nice sturdy chipboard. And even if you're not gonna use it to store your paints, these are really handy to make drawer dividers and, um, and store other things. It does keep your palettes nice and protected and also keeps them from sliding off your shelves if you're someone like me who happens to collect a bunch of watercolor palettes. Uh, we've got a black chamois here. This feels like the type of uh, fabric that you get when you um, you know, buy lens cleaners, you get a new pair of glasses. This is what that fabric feels like. And you can lift this right out of the box. This has a glossy black enameled tin with some gold printing on it. It goes all the way around the back where you have a thumb ring. And we've got the Paul Rubens logo in gold. And then we've got our paints in here and we could pull out this tray if we need more mixing area. So pretty standard tin, just some different um, printing. And this is also available in pink and it's the same colors in the pink set as well. I just looked at both of them online. It seems like both, I've got them, actually I got them right here. Yeah, the same colors on both sets. So um, we are going to make a swatch chart here and we'll be able to see some nice big juicy swatches of these. Um, there's also, in our box, we have a brochure, and I think there are 40, it looks like there's 48 colors in this fifth generation range. Um, so far, what I can see on Amazon USA, there's only the 24 colors available. Although I did notice that from their their first um, half pans of watercolors, you used to be able to get them in a 24 set and a 48 set and also a 12 set. But now you can get the 24 set, then they have an additional 24 set, which would give you all 48 colors. So if you have the 24 set, you can just buy that like kind of booster set to get you to 48 so you don't have to buy the 48 set. Because what I did was I actually liked the 24 set so much that I bought the 48 set. So that would have been a better um, a better deal. Unless, well, I mean, it's not a better deal. You just don't have to get doubles, I guess. So maybe they'll be coming out with another set that has the additional colors. I'm not sure. Um, we got a picture of, I don't know if they're the founders of Paul Rubens, or, but you see these guys in the brochures a lot. And they're standing in front of a blocks sign. So maybe they... Um, did some training there. I don't know, Blocks, I think is a German watercolor company, but um, I don't know what exactly the the relationship is, but I just think that's kind of funny that that's what they, that, that's the picture they have in the brochure. And then it also comes with a swatch, and I believe the swatch is on their cotton glitter paper. I like their 100% cotton glitter paper. I'm just seeing if it, if it says in English. I don't see it, but it has the, um, has the color number, has the Chinese name, I assume, and then it's got the pigment number. And if you look through here, which is kind of nice on this printout because it's got nice, well, I'm gonna put my reading glasses on though <laughs> before I get too far into this. It does have the um, the pigment numbers written out nice and big. So I like that, I think that's really helpful. And a lot of these are single pigment colors. I'm just looking through and out of the 24, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, only six out of the 24 have multiple pigments. So the rest are single pigments. So what would that be 18 single pigment colors? I think that's pretty exciting. So uh, we will fill out this as well, but I also prepared a swatch chart here cause I like to swatch all of my stuff on very similar paper. I like to use um, cellulose paper, a um, either 100% wood pulp or 25% cotton, 75% wood pulp. It's just it's just kind of a little basic way that I swatch my papers. I want all of my swatches to be similar. So what I think I'm going to do is, I think it's, it's kind of weird the way that the swatch goes because it's not gonna line 
up exactly with the um, with the thing there. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna put some adhesive on my paper and I am going to put the wrappers on the blocks here so that when I swatch it, I will have all of my information at my fingertips because that's handy. And I like to prepare this ahead of time. So let's just take a, we'll unwrap a few together and then I'll do the rest off camera because that will be kind of boring, I think. I'm just gonna pull this tray right out and zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole swatch guide. So here we have, on here I can see uh, pigment information right on the wrapper. So that's why I like to keep the wrappers um, rather than write everything out again. And this one is PW6, POI53 and PBR24. I think it's, yeah, Naples yellow. Oh, that's a pretty color. Now just looking at this and how this slides off, this reminds me of another paint that um, I actually I actually reviewed recently and I liked quite a bit. And that would be the Verbanum Art, Verba, Verbinum, Verbanum Art. Um, as soon as, because I did peek, I did peek at the set before we unboxed it today and I was like, oh, that reminds me of, and this is Lemon Yellow PY3. This reminds me of that set. And I'll show you the swatch for that set right here. Um, but like I was able to slide those, those wrappers right off. They're also made in China. And we had a little, we were kind of talking about this during the review for that set because um, we were trying to think who's making, because it's a nice quality paint. And we we're kind of wondering who's making good paint like that in China that they could be getting these made by. And um, some viewers suggested Paul Rubens, but I'm like, they, they don't remind me of any Paul Rubens things exactly. They're kind of similar to the fourth generation two paints, but I'm gonna have to compare these with the Verbanum art paints of the same color because um, actually, you know what? I have that here. That's by the way, that is um, cadmium yellow light and that's PY35, so it's a true cadmium color. I did grab that verbatim set because I wanted to compare them. Let's take a quick, a really quick look right now, but then we'll, we'll compare a little bit more going forward because I, I think that you might have a, uh, it's the same product, just different colors. I think we might have the same, the same maker. Well, that, well, it'll be really interesting to see how quickly the paint wears down because this paint wore down really quick. I don't think the pans, No, the pans are not the same. I was wondering if maybe the pans were the same. So maybe not. No, I guess they're not as similar as I thought, but we'll swatch out some of the identical colors and see and see what we uh, what we get, because I think I'm just curious about that sort of thing. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the rest of my wrappers down on this paper, and then we're gonna come back, and when we swatch them, we'll talk about the different color uh, pigments, pigment codes, and all of that stuff. So. Um, I just figured it might be kind of boring to watch, <laughs> but people like to see the swatching for some reason. Yeah, I guess they're not as similar as I thought they were when I first, when I first saw it. I'll probably put a piece of tape over the, uh, the whole row, so I'm not going to worry about the excess adhesive that's showing there. I just want to make sure I can see my pigment numbers as we go. So we'll be back in a minute. Time to start swatching. I've got the, um, the swatch card all settled out. We've got, we're gonna start with Naples Yellow and just kind of fade it down a little bit. Do a little bit more color toward the top. This is a combination of uh, PW6, PY53 and PBR24. Our next color is PY3 Lemon Yellow. I'll do my little swatch on there. Very, well, not very transparent, but quite transparent. Yeah, quite transparent actually. Now we have Cadmium Yellow Light, PY35. I like Cadmium Yellow, not everybody does. Actually, maybe I'll just wet the area under a bit so that it can kind of fade out. Cadmium Yellows tend to be a little bit on the opaque side, a little bit less 
movie. Didn't blot off my brush, pull up some of that color so we have a little bit of a gradient there. We'll do a glaze over top. The next color is, let's see, what are they calling that one? Cadmium Yellow Hue Deep, PY65. Hue just means it's not the real cadmium yellow, of course. It's kind of like an Indian yellow, very nice color. Next color is a orange, PO62. The name of it is Cadmium Orange Hue. I think actual Cadmium Orange is PO20. What I'm noticing though, even when I gradient out the swatch, it does kind of fill the area pretty well. The next one is a cadmium red. Let's try, let's try to make a gradient swatch on the on the card a little bit more. So I'll just stop there. Take some fresh water, draw it down with the rest of the water, see if I can get a better gradient there. I feel like that's kind of weak if I do it like that. I uh, I haven't had any issues painting with Paul Rubin's paints. Oh, looks like it has a little granulation in it. Cadmium reds can. Some do, some don't. Um, depends on how fine they mill the paint, I think. Pretty color. Next color is um, Paraline Maroon PR179. That's one you don't see in the um, more budget sets too often. Really pretty crimsony color. This one looks more crimson than other ones. I probably shouldn't cover over my info that so much. Let's just wipe some of that out. I'm just gonna keep this in the, the box with it, I think. The next color is Conacridone Rose PV19. Oops, I think I accidentally dipped it into the color, into the maroon. I don't wanna don't want to contaminate it. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a little more neutral than the Quinn Roses usually are. Almost like a permanent alizarin crimson color. That's really nice. Next color is Quinacridone Maroon PV42. Now that one, I think I only have, I think I have that color in a Schmincke. That's a pretty mauve color. That's that's a nice color. I don't know much about that pigment. Um, I'm thinking in Schmincke it was not rated for light fastness. Like it didn't just didn't have a rating. So um, that's interesting. The next color is Doxazine Violet. That's a pretty common color. PV23. This is such an intense color. You really need to water it down a bit because it is so strong. I use it for deep shadows a lot. And a little goes a long way. I've had some in my plein air palette and I've been thinking about um, doing something different. This next color is indigo. Um, but it's like, I'm never gonna use it up because it's uh, you just use a tiny little bit. So it's probably in my palette to stay. This is a combination of PB15 colon one and PB66. So I think it's like a, um, PB66. I was thinking that's indithrone blue, but maybe that's in actual indigo. I think it might be a combination of phthalo blue and indigo, like the, the true in, indigo pigment. Because I'm thinking PB66 is indigo and PB60 is indithrone blue, but I might be off. That might be actually be indithrone blue. Nice earthy denim blue color. Uh, our next color is a French blue or what we know as ultramarine, PB29. Now, a French ultramarine versus a standard ultramarine is usually a little bit warmer and it may granulate a little bit more. 
That's a really pretty color. It looks like a typical ultramarine blue. I'm wondering if it's going to granulate. Let me add a little bit more water to that so that if it does granulate, we can really see it. It'd be a nice puddly color to, to see that. Add a little bit more pigment in there too. And we'll see what it looks like it's going to. All right. Next up, we have Prussian blue, or actually they call it Berlin blue. Ooh, that's pretty. I like a Prussian blue. Now Prussian blue has, oh, all of these have light fastness ratings, like star ratings on the wrappers too, which is really nice. So we'll have to go over that at the end. Um, this is PB27, PB27 does have the reputation of not being very light fast because it can change when exposed to light, but then it does recover when put in the shade. So um, you see varying, there some companies give it a higher light fast ratings than others because they have different opinions on whether that's acceptable. acceptable. I think Kimberly Crick put it best. Um, I shouldn't have to put my, my painting in the closet for a nap for the colors to look good. I thought that was funny. I think it was her who said that. This next one is um, uh, Thalo Blue. It is your typical PB15 colon 3. It's a beautiful, clean, primary blue. The next color is, uh, what do they call that? Translucent Turquoise. And that is PB16, which is another Thalo color. As opposed to, um, as opposed to like a cobalt teal or cobalt turquoise, which is a little bit more opaque and hazy. This is really, really bright and clean. This is a pretty color. I don't think it's as light fast as your typical phthalo blue, but it is a beautiful color. Beautiful Caribbean sea blue. So far, actually, except for the Naples yellow, these are all extremely transparent colors. Um, the next color is emerald, no, they're calling it oriental green. And PG7, which is a phthalo green. Sometimes you see that called emerald green. It's a little bit, it's like a phthalo green blue shade. The next color is May green. And this is a mix between PY151 and PG7. This is a color, I used to use it quite a bit um, with botanicals, especially because I used to like to paint lilies a lot and you always would see that in like your, your day lilies and amaryllis and stuff. Uh, I don't use it that much these days, probably because I would generally mix my green and that green's only gonna get as saturated as that. It's not gonna get really dark. So I would go with a phthalo green and, and then mix it with whatever I needed. This next one is cobalt turquoise dark and this is PG26. So it's not, uh, it's not, it's more like a cobalt green than it is like if you ever used a cobalt teal or a cobalt turquoise. Generally, those are a little bit more blue. This looks more like your typical cobalt. I'm gonna add some more water in that because I think that's gonna granulate quite nicely. Um, this is more like your cobalt green. This is actually these rewet really well, and that's a kind of an issue that I've had with cobalt green is that it doesn't rewet very well. But this one is wetting very well, probably because it's formulated for a pan. That's really exciting. That's nice. I like that we've got a couple of granulating colors in this kit because um, it'll make it kind of versatile. You can get different effects with one, one paint kit. Next one is Olive Green Dark. This is a mixture of PO62 and PG7. So it's a mixture of that color and that color. Oh gosh, that's lovely. It's like on a, a pretty sap green color. Very nice. Not as luminous as some sap greens, but not bad. Next color is Earth Yellow, PY42. Maybe a nice yellow ochre color. Yellow ochre, I use that in almost every painting. Mm, that's pretty, that's a nice one. 
Our next color is Burnt Sienna, and this is a, a one of the mixes. It's PR101 and PBK9. And the, the, Oops, I got the, the wrong one. That seems to be something I see in Asian colors a lot, whether it's Korean, Chinese, or Japanese. I often will see them mixing black in their Burnt Sienna. They'll use PR101 and PBK9. This looks really clean, though, so I don't think there's a lot of black in there. Nice and transparent, too. Also, um, Van Gogh does that. They're um, a Dutch company. Let's see. The next one is a straight PR101 Venetian Red. And this is going to be very similar to an English Red or an Indian Red. Just that red iron oxide. I think it just depends on oops, where they get the pigment from. I should have done my little swatch before I clean my brush. The next color is Brown Umber, and that is a mixture of PB15 colon 1, which is a phthalo blue, PBK7, which is a black, and PBK9. There's, wow, there's no, is that right? Let's take a look at this. Really? Brown Umber? That does not, that, huh. PB15 colon 1, P, oh no, PBR7. Okay, so there's a typo on the swatch card here, and but it's not on the pan. It's got kind of a green, a green undertone. Must be from the yellow undertones and the brown and the blue. But uh, it's kind of, um, it says brown umber. To me, it looks like a sepia. <clears throat> and then last, we have PBK9 Black. This is uh, ivory black. I'm glad there's no white in this set, but I wish, I kind of wish also there was no black or the umber that could go to. I wish there was like a, br a burnt umber so we had a darker, richer brown. I mean, we can mix that, but it would be really nice to have that handy and ready to go and already mixed. But other than that, I don't really have qualms with this uh see how cool in temperature this is like a cool in temperature black that's almost like a warm in temperature black so uh, we're gonna let this dry and then we will do glazes and see what the mass tone looks like when we've applied it full strength um but the color selection is nice i feel like the the flow of this is nice oh look at the granulation we're getting on the on that green that's really pretty and on the blue uh, very transparent, except for the Naples yellow, but that has white, so that's to be expected. I'm not seeing any shine yet. I'm wondering. Um, I have a I have a feeling that those two colors might get a little bit of shine in mass tone, but we're not going to know until we actually do that test, which we will do when we come back. Now we're going to do a glaze of these colors. I'm going to. I did spray the palette just so the paint would be ready to go because I had left for a while. I'm going to do a little dash on the swatch, a small swatch card, and then I'll do a stripe in mass tone, or pretty much mass tone, for the um, the big swatch, and I'm going to do that all the way through, and that'll just give us a good idea of the full strength. We'll get to see if there's any shiny spots or anything else that we need to watch out for. We'll see how it affects the color underneath, um, or if it tries to lift up the color underneath. I dried this naturally. I just um, just let it dry. I had some errands to do, so I just left it drying. These rewet very well. The colors are nice and vibrant. I also like to do the the uh, mass tone just because, um, you know, in case I overwater it down. When I first swatch it out, I don't pre wet the palette, so it just gives me a good idea of what to expect if I want it thicker. I love the cadmium red. I feel like I get a really good amount of, of color up. This is a pretty per perilene oh, maroon. My goodness, I have a hard time with that one. If a uh, clean water and a dirty water, always wash your brush in the dirty water. 
before getting fresh water to make your swatch. Quinacridone rose. That's weird. It's more like a matter red. And then let's see. We're to this one. I was. I st had to stop for a second. Like, did I grab the wrong color? Though, because those are those two look very similar. But I don't think I did. Let me swatch each of those really quick just to make sure I didn't. No, I got the right color. Oh! And this pretty purple, the Axazine Violet. That's, I mean, that color is one of those ones that's almost black in mass tone. I looked at uh, all my old Paul Rubin swatches, and these are the closest to their fourth generation two watercolors. Um, I compared them to the Verbanum art, which I thought they might be the same as, but um, I didn't really find the similarities once I looked at my swatches side by side and once I looked at the pans. But at first, when I first peeked at them, I'm like, ooh, that looks familiar, but... Because I wondered if maybe Paul Rubens made the... Oh, shoot. keep forgetting to do the little swatches here. I would wondered if Paul Rubens had made the Verbanum, Verbanum art paints. But it doesn't appear to be the case. I don't know. Maybe they did, but... Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I mean, that, I don't know. That's just fun to look at, isn't it? We'll do... this color. This is uh, Berlin Blue. Ooh, I feel like I got maybe a little too much water there. Ah, I think it's fine. Next one is Thalo Blue. I did tape down my, um, my wrappers there because they were starting to peel up already, so... They needed a little extra adhesive. This is such a pretty, this transparent turquoise. Oops, I think I might have got that a little too thick. So if that's shiny, that might just be me putting on too much. Do you guys like these longer videos like this? I just wonder because this is a lot of Basic swatching. Yeah, I'm kind of worried I'm getting that a little too thick. Maybe I shouldn't have pre-wet them. What do they call this? May green. Yeah, may green is what I would know this color as. Sometimes companies name their colors weird stuff. It'd be really fun to, when I do the uh, artwork, because I'll do the artwork on a nicer paper than what I swatch on. So I like it because then you get you get several varieties of of what the paint will look like on different papers. And it just I don't know, I feel like it gives a more well rounded look at a paint than just just a swatch or just a painting. You know? Because I this is like kind of my control group. So far so good. I'm liking these as well as uh other Paul Rubens paints that I've used. And considering that these are these go for about 50 bucks for 24 colors, um, comparatively, compared to like other professional brands of 24 colors, I'm pretty happy with them. I like there's a couple of unique colors in here that you don't see in every set. I wish it was a more stronger dark brown. You know if somebody was getting this as a first set. And there are some cadmium colors, which I like, but some people might not like that. So that's something to think, to think about. Definitely not a set that I would give to children, not young children anyway, because of that. And there. I think these are really vibrant. They're really quite nice. Um, 
I'm going to let this dry and then we'll do the scrub test. I'm probably going to let this dry overnight. We'll do the lifting test after that. Um, and you know what? I do have a little... I'm just going to brush over that. I had a little, bu a little bubble, a little puddle there. But oops, I forgot to do the last couple swatches on this. Oftentimes I'll just make a, a tiny swatch card for inside the thing, but I might just use this because this looks pretty good. I actually just cut the um, cut the the swatch in half and then put them in like that so I can arrange them the way the paints are. Because if I do it like this, if I do it like this there, kind of backwards, you know, if I do it like this, then it's like this correlates with that, and then this correlates with that. It's like I wish it were kind of flipped, but I might just chop it in half. I don't know. Or I might just leave it like this. Let's be honest. I'll probably just leave it like this. But anyway, I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll see you back for the lift test. So we're back. I'm looking here at these glazes. Now, I do have a little bit of shine on some of them. I was expecting that one to have some shine. That's a typical, um, that's a typical color I see get kind of shiny. So the quinacridone rose, which kind of looks like a matter red, and also the uh, quinacridone magenta, which to me looks more like a, quinac a quinacridone rose, to be honest. Those two did. I don't know if you'd typically be using them that strong, though, so I don't know if that's that fair of a, of a criticism, but there it is. Um, also, you know, a tiny bit on the top of the dioxazine violet, but I don't think you'd be using it that thickly. Um, and basically, any place where we gathered like a thick puddle, there at the top of the phthalo blue and the top of the phthalo green, um, or they call it oriental green, but um, yeah. But other than that, uh, we have a pretty nice matte finish. The ultramarine blue is very smooth, so if you prefer a smoother ultramarine blue, you're probably going to like that. And... Um, yeah, I, I think they, they glazed fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to do a lift test. And I don't know how important or in, interesting this will be to many of you, but certain colors stain and certain colors are more likely to lift. So what you do is you wet your, I like to use a scrubber brush because um, they're designed for this. And you can use a flat brush, but a flat brush you could wear down your bristles a bit. These are by the company Royal and Langnickel. They have them, they're called the soft scrubbers. They're made with golden tacklon rather than the white hard nylon fibers. And I highly recommend them to any watercolor artist. It doesn't matter what line, this is a Nocturna. They're in the Menta and the Zen lines as well. But basically what I do is I just kind of go back and forth gently in an area with a damp brush and then I blot it off. So we can see we have a little staining there which is to be expected on a quinacridone color, but on an earth tone or a mineral based color, I would be expecting very little to no staining. So let's try that over here. Blot the extra water off. And then I'll just do the rest of them off camera uh, and we can come back and look at the results. But, oh, actually, I think some staining on that one. I'm surprised. Let's see if we can Well, it does come off pretty well, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift a little swatch on each one of these. And then um, when we come back, I'm going to compare it to some other Paul Rubin sets that I have, as well as that Verbanum set, which they, they actually I don't think they're the same paints. Um, and then after that, I'll do some artwork and, uh, and show you those results as well. Oh, we can look at this swatch too, which is on a cotton paper. I do believe, I believe it's their glitter cotton paper. And the only, the only shine I'm seeing there is on where the Naples yellow puddled. And right there in the phthalo blue where I probably had a little bit too much paint. So that could be, we could just be getting more of the shine on that um, wood pulp paper there. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be back for comparison after I do the lift test and we'll see you then. All right, uh, doing the lift test, the colors that lifted were pretty, um, you know, pretty much what I expected. We had some staining on the phthalo and quinacridone colors, which is what I expected. Um, yeah, they all seem to have their own bit of personality, which is good. I don't like to have um, paint where every single paint performs the same way. In watercolor, I like there to be some granulators, some more transparent, some more lifting, some more staining. And um, that's what I've got here. I have no uh, reason to believe that the pigment pigments denoted in these, in these paints are uh, mislabeled or incorrect. So that's a great sign. So let's compare this to the different Paul Rubin sets that... 
I've reviewed in the past, and you can find these past reviews on my channel. This one right here, uh, this is the Paul Rubens 48 set. I reviewed their 24 set. This was the first generation of half pans, and I enjoyed them so much that I waited for a sale on the 48 set, and when I saw the price go down, I bought it. Currently, you can buy, if you have the 24 set, the original 24 set already, they sell another 24 set in a blue tin that has the remaining colors, so you'd have all these colors in here. So you don't need to buy the 48 set if you already have the 24 set and you want all of those colors. Um, these, uh, you know, some of the similar colors are going to look the same. Um, I found that the color selection was a bit different on this set than that set. Like, you're going to have some colors that are not in the original set, but then again, you do have a lot of similar similar colors over the 48. So, um, like their Naples yellow, the Naples yellow in the 48 set is just a straight PBR 24, whereas the Naples yellow in this set is a mixture of, um, oh my gosh, can I read that? Uh, it's got white, it's got um, PY53, is, I gotta look it up on this, on this one here. It's got um, white PY53 and PBR24, so it's a mix. I prefer that one a little bit more, I'd say, just because I, I prefer to have a single color, but um, the color looks fairly similar. I think it's a little closer to, easier to compare like this. We've got a PY3 lemon yellow, which, let's see, do we have one of those? Actually, I don't know if we do. It's PY35. Uh, hmm, actually, I don't think we do in the original Paul Rubens. Uh, PY35, we think I just saw a PY35 right there, but it's a deeper color than the than the version here. That's a cadmium yellow, so it's cad yellow medium. That's just, that's like a cad yellow light. Um, PY65. So, I mean, you're going to have a lot of uh, similar colors. That's actually a cadmium orange. But they're not all the same. So if you got this set, if you had this previous set and you got this one, you're going to have some duplicates, but not everything. And I will say that the colors are a bit different. Now, if you look at like um, turquoise light here, it's a beautiful cobalt teal color. Here they call, they have a, a transparent turquoise. And that is really more of like a um, kind of close to peacock blue, which is the same pigment, but different intensities. So this newer, this newer version is more intense. And um, this cobalt turquoise dark, they have turquoise deep here, which is pretty similar. That one's a little bit more blue. So yeah, I would say if you already have this, but you're thinking you'd like to try out that paint and see what's new, you will have some new colors with this. Um, so that's their original, like I guess I would say version one of their watercolor paints, which were in half pans. Then they came out with a set of tubes. They, they also had a student grade set of tubes. I'm not looking at their student grade paints in this at all, just their professional ones. Um, they had a set called Song, which was gorgeous. It was in tubes and it came in um, this lovely plastic case that had really long wells. So you could put a little paint on the end and bring it out to washes. And that was great. I would say there really isn't anything, any duplications, um, except maybe the PY3 and uh, actually I think that's, I think that might be the only duplication in, uh, in the yellows there. Um, PV19, those two look pretty much the same. Um, there's a phthalo blue there. Less gloss on these guys, it seems like. There's also an ultramarine blue and a dioxazine violet, but they don't seem to be the exact same formulations. So if you had this set and you want to add the set to it, I think that would be those would be a nice complement because there's not a lot of overlap. This is a tube set, this is a pan set. But I don't think you can get this one anymore. Um, they had two sets, and I never got the second set, and I kind of regret not getting the second set because there was some, like, um, really beautiful muted, kind of earthy, moody tones in there that um, seemed to only be available in that set. But um, this was from a few years ago. Then um, the set that I think... Well, let's do one more before we do the one that I think it's the most closest to. Then they came out with a set called the fourth generation um, pans. And the fourth generation pans, they had a, this pretty kind of gemstone looking box. And again, the colors, there are some similarities like that PW3 lemon yellow. I'm, P, I'm sorry, PY3 lemon yellow. Um, and this, uh, what's that one? Is that the same pigment? PY110, PY154. No, it was a different color, but it's very similar 
similar looking. Did they both have a cadmium? Nope, that's not a cadmium red. I'm thinking maybe this set didn't have any cadmiums in it. This might be a good set to choose if you don't want cobalts or cadmiums in your paint. So maybe that's why they came out with this set to get some of the similar colors that uh, that were familiar. There's also a pretty mineral violet in this. Um, and you know, they, they both have this kind of like a Venetian red or English red color. This is Venetian red, that's English red, very similar. Um, and they both have a yellow ochre. They call it earth yellow here and yellow ochre there. Um, and they both have the ultramarine. So they both have they all both have kind of the, a basic a basic split primary, and then they, but they each have kind of different antiscillary colors to go with it. So that was the fourth generation Paul Rubens pans. It came in the uh, kind of foam type palette, beautiful metal palette. And then there was another set that uh, it kind of came and went. I don't think you can get it anymore either, but I really liked it. It was they were super duper transparent, and that was. Um, that was the set here, the phosphorescent color, which just had a little hint of glitter in it, but they were super transparent pigments with a hint of glitter. The earth tones were lovely even, and uh, that, that was a fun one, but I don't think they do that one anymore. Oh, and just for comparison, the original 24 set in the pink tin versus this set that I just showed you today, this is what the original 24 set looked like, and there is a PY3, there is a PY35, um, there is a PR108, so I would say probably the, the original set is similar. Not exactly the same though, but there are there are some similarities. They're, they're, I think I like the Earth Tones better in the original 24 set. Um, and that's still available, so that's nice because you can still get that one if you prefer. Now the set that this seems to be the most similar to, in my opinion, is their set of 36 fourth generation tubes. Ironically not similar to the fourth generation pans. These are called fifth generation watercolors. That's what it says on the, on the tin. Uh, so these fourth generation tubes I found to be very similar. The um, the Naples yellow is not exactly the same mix. It's just PW6 and PBR24, but it looks about the same, although the, the one in the pans has a little bit more opacity to it, so I prefer the one from the tube. Um, the lemon yellow PW3 looks about the same. They've got a cadmium yellow PY35 that seems about the same. Then you've got a PY65, which I don't have a PY65 in this set, but the Indian Yellow PY83 is very similar to that. Um, let's see, they've got an Earth Yellow PY42, and that's the Earth Yellow PY42. I feel like the tubes are a bit smoother, honestly. The, like the paint seems to be a little bit, a little bit more sheer and smooth. So something to consider. And I also I didn't get any of the shine. Maybe a little bit on that Quinn Violet, a little bit of shine there, but um, but not much at all. So that might be a nice, um, a nicer option. It's really, it really just depends on what you like, I think. Um, we get a cad red light right there, very similar. We got a transparent orange. We don't have, oh, we got the chromium orange hue, which is similar to, yep, same color, same color as that. Um, just going through and seeing what other similarities. Quinn Rose, let's see, what's their Quinn Rose right there? Very similar, but no, I'm not seeing the shine on that. This is also cellulose paper, so I think this might be the Arteza Expert cellulose. So, um, I don't know why I'm getting so much more shine on that. I, I think the tube's a better color. The Indian red in the tube color has a beautiful granulation in it too. The Venetian red, see, it, I just feel like the colors from the tubes are much more subtle. If you look at the Venetian red, doesn't it seem like that's a much smoother and subtler color there, if I'm lined up with one another? Um, and Quinn Maroon, same color, Quinn Maroon, Quinn Maroon. Again, it just feels a little bit smoother. I'm not sure why exactly, but uh, got our dioxazine violet. Yeah, the tubes doesn't seem to have that um, that shine. There's a beautiful endothrone blue in the tube set of 36, which is PB60. And they do have the indigo that's PB15 colon 1 and PB66 right there. They seem to be very similar, just, I don't know, I feel like the tubes are a little bit smoother. And I did dry them down in half pans, and they, they, dry, they dried down really well for me. May green, oriental green. Olive green, the olive green. Is that olive green? That's olive green dark. So it's right there. There's that green right there. Now you might prefer the cobalt turquoise dark in the pans because it does seem to have a lot more granulation than the one in the tube. That's the same color. 
brown umber. I don't really care for that color too much. It's a little bit warmer in the tubes, it seems like. And then the ivory black, it seems a little bit stronger in the tube. Overall, these are these are what I would say are the most similar. Um, Price-wise, the set of 36, I think, was around $79 for five ML tubes, which would give you, I don't know, maybe two half pans, but honestly, yeah, I feel like the same, because once you try it down, I feel like the uh, five ML tube is really more equivalent to one half pan, although a lot of people say that that's not, so it's really equivalent to two. You fill it up twice, but I think once you account for shrinkage and water, it's about the same. Whereas uh, 24 here are in uh, are in half pans. You get 24 for about 50 bucks. So those might be a little bit more expensive. You do get a palette with the half pans um, versus that you have to find your own palette. But those, I think that the fourth generation tube paints and the fifth generation pan paints are, are the most similar offerings. So if I actually, if I look at this swatch here, I think this paper, well, this is a cotton paper and the paints are behaving much nicer on the cotton paper and much more similar to this, um, this Arteza Expert paper that I was using. So, you know, I mean, I'm still getting a, a, just a smidgen more, more shine on this. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a painting on some cotton paper and we're going to see how these paints, uh, these paints do just to rule out any sort of issues. I may have been heaven by applying it too thickly onto the paper there. And then I'll come back with my final assessments after that. So yeah, we'll see you back in a minute. All right, this is the uh, the painting I did with these Paul Rubens fifth generation paints. And I have to say, I really like them. They performed just like the uh, the other Paul Rubens. I didn't have any issues with glossiness, um, using them as a normal, you know, as a normal painting. I did uh, do some mixed media. I added some watercolor ground in here and I did draw with these, um, with these pens which are filled with uh, water soluble ink and yeah they worked fine and the colors were vibrant and um, they layered up nice and have any unexpected lifting they just performed the way a high quality watercolor should perform so um, I would say if you're curious give them a try I mean 50 bucks for a set of 24 professional paints you really can't beat it um, like I said they do have the original set which I think might be cheaper like maybe around 40 like the, the first set of 24 but these definitely are contenders I would look at the color schemes if you are looking for paints look at the sets and the different colors they offer and see what one meets your needs best obviously if you already have paints you love you don't need these um, but I think they're a really nice addition and um, they have a really nice price point so there you have it, my review of the Paul Rubens 5th Generation Paints. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these in-depth reviews. Until next time, happy crafting!